A couple of videos ago, I made two sawhorses for this temporary workbench, which is really nothing more than just a solid core door sitting on those sawhorses. And what I wanna do now is drill some three quarter inch bench dog holes because I've got some of these brass bench dogs. I've got a planing stop and some other clamps. I'm planning to do some hand tool woodworking on here until I have the real workbench. So what I've done is I've created this router jig to make those holes. So I made this jig out of some half inch plywood I had in the shop and I cut some seven eighths inch holes for the bench dogs and those are oversized. I'll explain that in a second. I spaced them six inches apart and two inches from the front of the guide because I want the holes to be two inches from the front of the bench top. And I put some fences on here so that I could just butt the guide right up against the edge, clamp this down, and it's gonna be right where I want it. Now, the reason I made those holes wider than three quarters of an inch is because I'll be using this router template guide in my plunge router. This is a 5 8 outside diameter guide, and I'm gonna use a half inch bit. And the distance between the bit and the outside of this guide is an eighth of an inch. And that's why I had to make these oversized. And so what'll happen is when I plunge this in there and I run it around clockwise, clockwise a few times, I'll end up with perfectly sized three quarter inch bench dog holes. So instead of using clamps, I'm gonna use some of this carpet tape, which is sticky on both sides. So you just cut some small squares like this. You don't need more than a little bit, otherwise you'll never get this off. So then I just stick it to the jig, and then you just peel the backing off of the tape just like this. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get off. All right, and then I need one more piece here. Don't ever run a length of this stuff the whole way because you'll never get it off. And by never get it off, I mean you'll never get the jig off of the bench top. So before I get too far down the road here, I wanted to call out this line I made on the workbench. This is the center of the workbench. And that will line up with the center of this hole. I made a line that shows where the center of the hole is here. So now I can just line these two lines up. This is easier if I stand up and look down so that they're both in the same orientation. And now I can just push on the jig and that's sticking down pretty well. So now I can route the holes on this side, pull this jig up, slide it down to the other end of the bench top and do those holes. All right, so I've got the bit and the template guide installed and I've got my vacuum attached. And I think I'll do this in a few passes going down about a quarter of an inch each time and then going clockwise a couple times and then a quarter inch down and I'll keep doing that until I get all the way through the door. Let's see how we did here. Oh yeah, that's gonna be nice. All right, almost done making holes. I just need to make a handful more for my planing stops because they require two bench dog holes for each one. And so what I did is I took my jig and I just cut it in half and then I glued and nailed this end here to make a T-square. So now I can just center it over my existing hole, push it down and make sure that sticky tape really holds. I didn't do that in one spot. I actually ruined one of my holes. So learn from my mistake. See if it fits. Perfect. Now I just take my boards and push them right up against the stop and I can plane away. And the last thing I wanna do is knock off all the sharp corners on each of the dog holes using a chamfering bit in my trim router.
Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And to see more of my other videos, just click here on the sides of the screen. We'll see you soon.